Okay. Great. Okay. So um, yesterday, so yesterday um, after you left, uh, Mark, so Liam and I, we kind of, we made a list and Liam, feel, please feel free to jump in at any sure. time. Sure, sure. So we made a list of these four items and um, that we thought that uh, perhaps the outreach SIG could work on um, as a way to help move the project forward, right? So the first item is under the educational outreach, which you are very well aware of, uh, Mark. And so the goal here, I think for the initial goal is just to um, develop a written program. And I put a link um, of where I, you know, the inspiration came from. Mm -hmm. And then the second item is, um, of course, uh, DevOps world. So I wanted to um, see if we can, you know, get volunteers to work with me on, you know, what is it that we want the community track to look like this year, right? Um, and, and of course, uh, reviewers for the CFP. Mm -hmm. um, the third item is diversity in Jenkins community. And Liam, I'll let you talk about this one. Sure. Um, basically, there's uh, uh, the Jenkins, the set of contributors, there, there are, there's a wide range of people that contribute to Jenkins, but by and large, like at these, um, these meetups, mostly what I see is white dudes and uh, uh, of, of varying ages, some of us getting more crusty over time. Um, <laughs> and it's, that, that saddens me. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't have an answer of how, how to address this, but it certainly is um, one of those things where it's like, how can we, can, how, what things can we do to invite in a broader range of people? I mean, I think, to be fair to to be fair to where we are, the the set of contributors to Jenkins in large part comes from the people that have worked with Jenkins, which have tended to be people that get stuck in the server room, which tends to be, you know, so um, you know you get it's a self selecting uh, group for people that are that that have a, a vested interest, right? But um, you know, I'm using this tool, so then I'm going to work on it. And that's, um, so we get our, our pipeline of people tends to be, you know, our, our our pool tends to be from that same group. But there's got to be ways that we can uh, draw a wider audience. Um, there's nothing about this, about Jenkins itself that, <laughs> or as far as I'm concerned, the people really in the community that says we're not, you know, open and inviting and interested in having more people contribute and a wider range. It's, you know, so there's some, some other thing, things that we should look at, right? Um, Cause I mean, when I'm thinking about it, it's like, I don't think that the, I think, I think there's some things the community itself could do to, to, to be more uh, friendly to new contributors and stuff like that. But like that, that, there's a, there's maybe something before the, hey, here's my first PR, hey, I'm interested in working on this, of how do we get people, uh, a, a broader spectrum of people in that funnel, right? Uh, yeah, so both of those things, but I, I'm, you know. I, I like I that. So, so it seems, seems well aligned with a topic we were discussing in some depth in the East version of the docs track earlier today. Um, so Zinab Abu Bakar is our uh, Google Season of Docs author that we had do the Kubernetes on or Jenkins on Kubernetes uh, documentation. Mm -hmm. Zinab's based out of Nigeria and right. is a leader in the SheCode Africa initiative. And right. SheCode Africa has a program that they're launching. They've they've launched it now, asking for. Uh, corporate sponsors and for open source projects that people can work on. So that she code Africa project runs for the month of April to invite uh, funded developers funded women in Africa 
to assist with open source projects. Mm. And so what we need is we need project ideas that we can bring to it and we need corporate sponsors. Uh, so Alyssa and I have already approached our shared employer and have good traction on that. Uh, I'm gonna ping several other po folks in different organizations. Um, for instance, we've got Alex Earl with Broadcom. We've got Jim Crowley with IBM. Uh, we've got several interesting candidates that may be willing to support she Code Africa as a way to then get those people involved in the Jenkins community as part of a very specifically targeted activity. So, so I think I think that's a great idea. Oleg also noted that outreach and specific outreach is probably the most important thing we can do in terms of health of the project. Right? We need we need we have lots of ideas of things we can do. What we lack are hands to do them. And the way we get hands to do them is by exactly these outreach programs that you're noting. Yeah, I like I mean, that. the diversity and, and the, the, the educational outreach and those kind of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, Mark, uh, uh, for that uh, that program, I think CDF might be able to be, be able to sponsor that program as well. The oh, she oh. code. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, good idea. Yeah. So. Uh, as part of the so so what in the conversation we had in the docs sig Zenob noted or in the docs track Zenob noted that she code Africa is really as much about code as it is about documentation so documentation is just a peripheral thing or is just one of many ways to contribute they're they're willing to have um, their contributors assist with code assist with promotion assist mm -hmm. with uh, other activities. So, yeah. and and I, I I like that the idea of proposing to CDF that they might also be a sponsor. I I I thought Oleg had a good concept that having the Jenkins project be actually a financial sponsor of the SheCode Africa project is probably not a not a sensible thing because one open source project is sponsoring another is not as effective as persuading corporations to sponsor open source projects. I see. So, so, and I think that's fair. The, the Jenkins Project's funds should be used directly for the Jenkins Project wherever possible. Okay. That makes sense. So I think um, like the, so like the education outreach can also be under the diversity in Jenkins community and or growing SIG participation. I think um, all that. And then I also started looking into what other um, organizations are doing with regards to diversity, right? And I found that, you know, it starts out like say, it starts out at home. So it starts out on our homepage or Jenkins.io. How are we communicating um, that we are accepting diversity, that we welcome this, right? So are we doing that, number one? So that's why I put that first bullet. Um, and sorry, when I wrote that down, I didn't really go back to Jenkins.io to look. Mm. But I thought maybe, you know, we should half that on there that um, explains that, you know, we are supporter of diversity. Um, and, and then as far as growing the SIG participation, I put a link there and I forgot which link that was. Uh, it was, um, yeah, the outreachy internship, um, supporting open source and such. I forget why I looked at that, but oh, that was like, oh, um, a paid internship, right? right? Um, I mean- if, and, it's, and, it's, and it's from a diverse, especially so it supports diversity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is on somewhere on um, along, let me find the link to that page, but there, there was a page that explains you know how a first-time contributor can contribute i mean it, it spells it all out i have to find that page but it's somewhere on my screen but i thought that was really helpful you know if if this is if this is what we want to do um might be good to have instructions on you know if you're a brand new first-time 
you know, welcome. These are the steps that you can do this. Well, and so certainly, certainly we're getting, we're getting, if we, if I look at diversity in the community, if we look at Google Summer of Code, mm -hmm. there's a, there's a, a great example of a diverse, a wide spectrum of contributors. We've got contributors from India there, contributors from China, contributors from Malaysia uh, or Singapore, I forget, you know, so, so lots of, lots of different people involved in those contributions. Uh, Natasha Stopa from Pennsylvania uh, was, I think it was a year ago. So, so we've got a, a, broad, a broad swath of people contributing there. And yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we just need to make sure to call out or highlight contributors. Mm. We, I think we should make an effort to do that, at least maybe on a monthly, quarterly basis, but give them a place to shine and the spotlight, you know, that may perhaps that they can say, hey, I did this with, you know, maybe their um, future um, um, employer. Mm -hmm. It might help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what if what if we were to do something like that as part of the as part of the jumbotron, for instance, some sort of a rotating view of here here are four or five contributors. When Cara presented her um, Google Summer of Code summary today, she put up a very nice set of six or seven pictures of the Google Summer of Code students, mm -hmm. and I find those pictures quite engaging. Should we? consider something like that if we could find hey on the Jenkins authors page there are individuals there that we might say hey if they've got a picture in it uh, let's highlight them and do it for a, some fixed period two mm -hmm. weeks or a month and as part of the jumbotron mm -hmm. and then rotate and highlight a different set yeah now the, the problem with that is that only gets authors from that site, and and that's a tiny fraction of the total contributors to Jenkins. I, I don't know that Spinet Connection, for instance, in in uh, in the Czech Republic has a picture on the on the site, so may not. Or of oh. Keshi Zhang, who is who is definitely a contributor from Google Summer of Code. Uh, or even Zenob. I'm not sure that Zenob's actually got a photo on there. So, so the, the idea may be good, but the implementation may be completely unworkable because we just don't have the right data there yet. I see. Hmm. <clears throat> but that is data that we can ask for. It is, and and it's certainly data we can solicit, right? We can yeah. we can ask them, hey, could you please, um, yeah, could you please help us highlight contributors to Jenkins, and and our selection can bias strongly towards people that we think will be interesting and and fun to see, mm -hmm. and interesting because they're diverse. I admit it, I think I'm interesting, but I'm a middle-aged white male. I have to acknowledge that. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we should, I don't think we should uh, you know, avoid highlighting people, but it's more just like, I think there, I mean, there are, we can highlight more. <laughs> so, right, I, and I, th I think you've got it exactly. This is not a downplaying of anyone. This is rather an emphasizing that this is a broad and very diverse community. And, mm -hmm. and it is, it's a fascinatingly diverse community. So I think yeah. you're right. So, um, so based on these four items, Mark, uh, I mean, do these look okay that we, we, what is the next step? I'm trying to figure out what's the next step we Fair. do here. Yeah, so, so I think tomorrow in the, in the roadmap presentation, or in the, yeah, in the concluding session, mm -hmm. uh, present these four as, as, I, as plans to be on the roadmap. And I think I would even put the review committee, yeah, put, put all four of them up as part of that, the slide deck for the final, and I haven't even created the slide deck yet. So we put them up for the slide deck. 
-hmm. and, and then you talk to them and solicit input. The intention is that tomorrow's closing session will be a working session. So we're going to, we're going to share these, these ideas and then we invite further comments. And then as we, as we do that, we may say, okay, we would like to put these things into the roadmap. And, and we think advocacy should be part of the Jenkins roadmap as well. Uh, I don't know if it's actually got a place right now for, for advocacy, does it? And now checking. Okay. Look, yeah. Because if it doesn't, I think it's, it's worth a discussion to say, hey, we think, oh, it does. We've got events, community events, absolutely. Okay. Where is so the roadmap anyways? Just it's jenkins.io slash project slash roadmap like this. Okay, so, so let's look at it. Oh, and yeah. here, if I click just the subset that are oh, outreach programs and yeah. community events. And, mm -hmm. and those, those both seem like great, great places for us to put. So we had community bridge as a mentorship potential and we've done one community bridge project, so we know it, it can work, but it would be good to do more. And then Jenkins on Kubernetes online meetups, we've we had started those, and yeah, so we have how the places. How do you get to that? that? How do you get to that roadmap from the top navigation? I always go like this. I go to any old page, scroll to the bottom, <laughs> okay. structure and governance. And then here is the roadmap. Structure and governance. That's yeah, that. that I, I agree. That is not a, that may not be natural. But then again, I am not a web website designer, so me well, designing web page <clears throat> navigation is 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 well beyond my depth. We could certainly put it, for instance, here as part of community. Uh, it's or yeah, and I just I, I was just like people talk about talk about this a bunch, and I'm like, okay, I just there's there's this is a cool page. It's very vis visual and very right. It highlights all the things that are available and uh, or at least a number of things that are available. And this is totally worth um, you know, putting up there, right? Yeah, well, have, let's test putting this. What if it were it. under about? About has only five items. What if we had roadmap in under there? Mm -hmm. well, and I would, even, I would even navigate, have, have more than one way to get to it. Maybe, um, okay, so, so so the about definitely. Um, right. And then community overview. It could be, I mean, it could be here, let's see, sub projects doesn't really obviously fit because this really is about sub projects. It's about major components. And this is more the overall, I mean, it, does it map to, does it map to the SIGs or not? It, not it, all, there's, it maps to there's, more than just the SIGs, right? Right, there, there certainly are SIG representation, but we could, for instance, we could on every SIG page, put a link to the roadmap for that SIG, right? Saying, hey, look, let's see the roadmap. The section. Yeah, exactly. Because um, that gives us a link to something live. Right. Something in, um, okay. I'm trying to think of where, um, community overview. Um, let's see, somehow. I'm thinking I, I, somewhere in the community section as well. Uh huh. Um, but I'm not really sure where. Ah, uh, okay. You think, well, yeah, and we could certainly put it, it, it seems every bit as interesting as uh, Wiki. Yeah, right? or sorry, Wiki is no longer interesting, right? Yeah, we, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any benefit to us having the Wiki link because it's read only now. So we repl mm -hmm. could replace it with Roadmap. Mm, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like the, at least those two places, and the third one being in the projects, the not the projects, the SIGs, right? Uh, or, well, so so oh, so, oh, in the projects. Excuse me. Yes. Okay. See, I hesitated to put it in sub projects. I'm, I didn't see how well I can certainly submit pull requests for all three. I'll submit them as three independent pull requests no. so that, that way we can have the discussions 
about them in the pull request because those are those are very reasonable places to consider should we add it to to two of the three one of the three all three and I don't think I don't think it makes sense in documentation and certainly plugins is not not roadmap so but but by the way I have to show you this notice what comes up when we do this, see this search by Algolia. This wow. is Gavin's prototype of real search, really cool search indexing. So bet you didn't know that strategy and strategies are both the ah. same word, but Algolia knows. <laughs> okay, cool. so Alyssa, back to your. Oh, it's fine. Cool. Well, Mark, how do we um, add the, these items onto the roadmap through, is it through pull requests as well? It, it is. So, so I think what we do is tomorrow during the presentation, mm -hmm. present them as ideas and then get agreement that yes, uh, they are good roadmap entries. And then after the conclusion of tomorrow's session, you and I can pair together and work on submitting the pull request. Okay. Because I've got a number of other roadmap changes that I need to update where the documentation roadmap is needs to be updated and several others. Therefore, it'd just be more efficient for you and me to do it together tomorrow or the next day. Okay, that sounds good. Now, I don't know if if DevOps World Review Committee will, I'm, I would expect that one may get some friction on, hey, why not a review committee for CD, CDCon or why not? Ed, and they may say that shouldn't be on the roadmap, but I'm cool with that. I think the others are are very much roadmap topics, right? We okay. we really do want them. Okay. Present all four and let's see what the what the voices say. All right. And then so uh, so then once that they approve as items for the roadmap and then we take this to the outreach sig and then we work out the plan is that is that the plan? Right. Okay. And then do we have to add, provide additional details than what we have currently have here on this document? Oh, I'm sure I'm sure that it will be expected that we we have get a plan together on hey, how are we going to do these things that we think are good ideas? Right. Uh, and, I mean, and that's for tomorrow? No, no. Uh, the, tomorrow they'll, we'll get a bunch of, I think what Mark was saying was that tomorrow we'll get a bunch of feedback. People will say, hey, we could try this, we can try that. We'll get some brainstorming and some more information and opinions and thoughts from people and then okay. synthesize those after the, gotcha. as, as, a, as the next steps after the summit. Okay, right. got it. Got yeah. it. So the idea was let's bring these these concepts to the to the larger group tomorrow Mm -hmm. And then, then listen for feedback there. Okay. Um, I guess <clears throat> let's see here. Da -da -da. Diversity, current SIG participation. Um, I guess under the SIG participation is where I put the roadmap. Just if you want to just track this, because it, it oh, it's good. a matter of making things visible, right? So right. current SIG participation may mean in part is make the the roadmap which has all of those sort of. Um, projects and where they're at and how to find them and they make that more visible on the GPS app. That's, that's the place to put that. Right, up. yeah, and so the idea there was, let's see, let me the about be sure that, section. About here, because only got and, five in it. And then replacing, Instead of replacing wiki, wiki with community, with roadmap, yep. because. Yep. And, then, and then also in the SIGs or the sub projects, uh, the SIGs, each of the SIGs does have Right. Each, I think the notion was each SIG page, particularly advocacy and outreach documentation, should yeah. link to the roadmap. Right. We want to we want to create a web of links to the roadmap. Yeah. The, I think if you click on one of those, you'll. We already have like sort of metadata in there that you can. Right. We can, you know, provide a little thing, a little, a small, an image link, so that it's not a huge imposition to get the. Right. Just a minute while I grab a picture of this to remind myself where we, where we think it should go. So it should really go there. Good. All right. Mm 
Okay. And yeah, so it, the idea was propose it under about, uh, under community, and under subprojects nice. links from individual SIG pages. Uh, subprojects are SIGs. Either. Oh, oh, right. Sorry, from individual from SIG. So it's SIG pages link to roadmap. Very good. Yeah, we did it uh, for a few six initially, but it it wasn't consistent. Yeah, so this just we'll just make it consistent that way. Um, that way, it's it brings it up a little higher. Good, super. Hi, Oleg. Yeah, hi, Oleg. Late for you. Hi. Yeah, well, like we didn't need to, to drag you out this late in the day. Thank yeah. you very much for being here, but yeah. you're that's sort of her heroism beyond the call. Mm -hmm. uh, you doing okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm still in the office. Oh, my oh dear. Oh, I am going to get scolded so severely. Oh, my <laughs> sake. So, oh, the scoldings that will be oh. epic for that. Great. Okay. Well, that's you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, that's fine. Yep. So for me, for sick participation, I just uh, current state reflects uh, the state of overall contributions, because uh, yeah, there are usual suspects, and there are people who are not that connected to the wider community. And in order to get these people who are participating in SIGs, presenting and contributing, uh, it uh, rather requires continuous outreach. And to do this outreach, you need well, basically people doing that. Right. Because yeah, when we we're pushing particular six, we're easily getting uh, to 10, 15 people on the call. Uh, but yeah, when uh, it stops, then it stops. Right. Well, and for me, there's there's an element of growing the SIGs by these these outreach programs, uh, GSOC, Google, she Code Africa, uh, Community Bridge or Outreachy through Community Bridge. But those tend more to be one at a time and cash needing cash, right? Whereas I think all oh, like what you're describing here is it's is, not only about cash; it's also about uh, temporary involvement. And even that, for example, yeah, last year we deliberately tied uh, all projects to six, but it was difficult to get uh, students and mentors participating in six meetings. We were successful for some of them, but uh, not for all cases. Uh, even though yeah, there was direct communication to all mentors that yeah, it's expected this year. And moreover, well, uh, students come and go, mentors come and go, and uh, six are rather about specific topics. So for me, it would be more important to actually attract company contributors uh, to six than uh, to do outreach programs. Mm -hmm. So outreach programs is a way to facilitate projects six are interested in, because six could provide an umbrella. So for example, you are interested in platform support, there is a group of uh, interested contributors and we can run out a reach program to get it done, including funding, etc. But in order to get participants, I would rather start from actually getting uh, people and companies uh, participating. Uh, and if uh, they are interested in what uh, the SIG is doing in particular agenda, then um, it could be the best way to actually get uh, the SIG going. So for example, arm support, we can definitely find a bunch of companies interested in that. Or let's say Jenkins Pipeline Debugger, if you announce this topic, I guess <laughs> many people would join the Pipeline Outrank meeting. Mm. Okay. Yeah, for company contributors, uh, you really need, uh, well, 
Excuse me. This uh, worked uh, on Wednesday. Uh, the recent people directly. Well, uh, and so, so this is one, Oleg, are you envisioning, for instance, we've got Jim Crowley from IBM right now who's mm -hmm. interested because of IBM's interest in, in doing work on it. We've got, uh, we could potentially have AWS involved or Google in terms of their cloud as part of a platform kind of effort. Is, is that the sort of thing that you're, in, you're thinking of there? Yeah, and for example, for AWS and for Azure, we had company representatives at the Cloud Native Seek for a while. And oh. we separate faded, uh, but in principle, we had people there. Good, right. I mean, for instance, we've got we've got Alex Earl who participates, but he's really, even though he's from Broadcom, I don't think his participation is motivated primarily by Broadcom's business because I think here what you're thinking is let's let's try to combine a company's business interest with the needs of the Jenkins project and align those for progress. So IBM would like 390 support and there are certainly ARM vendors that want ARM support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so something like that. Uh, so uh, special interest groups uh, are a way to facilitate uh, particular efforts. And the best way to do that is to ensure that uh, participants have individual interest in the topics. Right. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good insight. Yeah, so that's one I, I certainly know of some companies that I can connect with that encourage them to, to join up to the platform SIG and get involved. Yeah. So this sounds to me similar to like what CDF does. So they have the different committees or groups, working groups, right? And then um, so companies send their employee or to become a member of, or participate in that working group. So I think this is the same idea that Oleg is suggesting, right, yeah. Oleg? Yeah. Yeah, the same. Does does CDF do active active recruiting? Because I I took Oleg's account advice here that we should actively recruit and identify. Hey, we think we've got something interesting going on in the Jenkins project relative to what you're doing. We would love to have your your participation. So from what I know, um, I think it's the members, the members uh, of CDF. They are the ones that. So they pay CDF to be a member, and then they also send, you know, a representative from their company to be on one of those working groups. I have, I don't think I know of anyone that isn't a member and that's just, you know, volunteer their time and to be in the, those working groups, uh, unless they're, they are like an ambassador or something like that. But, but you may have highlighted something there. What about the CDF member companies, right? They're already, they are a good example of someone who's already invested in contributing to Continuous Delivery Foundation. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should consider asking their representative, hey, we've got this initiative or go to the CDF meetings and say, we've got these initiatives going on. Would love to have additional people come help us. Yeah, we can definitely ask. Although I know it's 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 quite challenging with those of us that's already sitting on those working groups. Plus, our you know our our our, our uh, you know nine to five your full day work. So I, that might be a challenge. Well, I, I wonder if this is something I should take up with with Tracy as to yeah. hey, um, what what are appropriate boundaries for us to invite CDF member companies to assist us or as invite the representatives to be more, to increase their involvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Great. Mm -hmm. So any other topics that we should be sure we go over today, Alyssa? Um, I think for me, I'm good.
I think we've covered all that we needed. Okay. And so I'll send you a link to a, a skeleton presentation that we can use for tomorrow's tomorrow's material. I think most of the session should be focused on conversation, but it's good to have these kind of concepts from each of the each of the tracks so that then we can get feedback and have discussions in that session. Okay. Um, before we go, uh, I have a, an off topic question, Mark. So you feel free to um, unrecord. Oh, okay. Let me, well, we'll, we'll call Whenever yeah. you're ready. Let's stop the recording and.